Hello, it's Paul from dronesguitar.com and as you may have heard, DJI just released the Mavic Mini and blew everyone's mind with some really incredible specs. Some reviewers already got the drone and made a review of it. However, nobody has yet made a comparison between the Mavic Mini, the Mavic Air and the DJ Spark. I know they're not exactly in the same price category, but some people might have the freedom to buy one of these. And you might wonder if it's worth upgrading from the DJ Spark or the Mavic Air, or if it's even an upgrade. For that, stick till the end because I have a perfect answer for you. I also created an article and visual infographic on dronescreator.com. There's a link in the description with all of the really important specs compared side by side between these three and the winner underlined in each category. There's also my commentary on every aspect of the drone if you're too lazy to watch this video or if you want to get back to the specs themselves and discuss them with your friends. So what's really revolutionary with the new Mavic Mini is its insane weight. Being under 250 grams means it's legal to fly it without a permit in the States and many other countries. It really doesn't have any competition when it comes to drones under 250 grams. It's definitely the winner. However, what if you don't care that much about the weight? Then which one of these three drones will you pick? Let's talk about battery life first. This is probably the most amazing change DJ has made with the Mavic Mini. Because it can stay in the air up to 30 minutes. That's about as much as my Mavic 2. And that's on a whole new level of price. The Mavic Air can fly for 20 minutes and the DJ Spark can fly for barely 16 minutes. And all this in perfect conditions. So the drone has to go at a constant speed and with no wind. These are pretty big differences, but how much do they fly in real life conditions? Well, the Mavic Mini does fly up to 27 minutes in normal conditions until it hits low battery, so it has to return home. The Mavic Air flies to about 17 to 18 minutes in normal conditions and the J Spark about 14 minutes. How they made the Mavic Mini into such a battery beast is beyond me. They probably just have reduced the weight so much that the bigger battery makes it fly for a longer time. The motors are probably also more efficient. What about range? Well, the Mavic Mini and Mavic Air can both fly for 4 km maximum in FCC mode. That means if you buy it from the United States. The equivalent of that is 2.5 miles. And the Spark only flies for 2 km, maybe a bit more if you're lucky. And I repeat, that is the range for FCC mode, which is only if you buy the drone from the States. But if you're from Europe, things change a lot. And nobody seems to talk about this anytime. In Europe, there are different frequencies allowed, so the drones are considerably limited compared to what you get from the States. If you're from Europe, you might expect to get a maximum of 2 km for both Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air. However, for the J Spark, you can only get about 500 meters, maybe 800 if you're lucky. And that's a really big difference. Let's get into the speed and how fast these drones can fly. I was expecting this newer and really small drone just not be as fast because it has smaller motors and a smaller overall body. But it's only a measly 3 km per hour slower than the Spark, which is 47 km per hour compared to the 50 km per hour that the Spark flies at. The Mavic Air flies considerably faster at 68 km per hour. Now the important stuff, let's talk a bit about camera quality. At this size, 249 grams, I wouldn't expect a big improvement from the Spark. I basically imagined it would be the Spark but lightweight and foldable. But they managed to include a 3-axis gimbal in there and a 2.7K camera. The 3-axis gimbal means that the side motion of the drone is much smoother than the Spark. So if you're doing something like orbit mode, you won't get that jittery effect. And when it comes to resolution, the 2.7K resolution is absolutely perfect for me at least, because I anyway usually record in 2.7K, that's kind of the perfect resolution in between 1080p and 4K, so you can record a really high quality and detailed image while also not being a hassle for your computer to process it afterwards. The Mavic Air does record in 4K, so if you want that extra step and can't compromise, then the Mavic Air is definitely for you. Another easy way to tell how a camera records and how good the quality is, is bitrate. That is, how many bits of information a camera can process in a respective amount of time. In megabits per second, the DJI Mavic Air is the record holder at 100 megabits per second, while next is the Mavic Mini, if you believe it or not, at 40 megabits per second, and the DJ Spark at a considerably lower 24 megabits per second. They all have the same size image size. But remember that the DJ Spark has been released back in the 2017 and the camera technology has evolved a bit since then. What about photos though? 
they all take 4K photos in slightly different image resolutions. The Mavic Air and Mavic Mini can go up to 3200 ISO in photo mode, while the DJI Spark can only go to 1600 ISO. But of course, at 3200 ISO, the image is gonna get pretty noisy, but it's still good to have that freedom of expression. One area that the Mavic Mini isn't great is the photo modes. The single shot and interval photo are the only tricks that this drone can do. While the Mavic Air, the DJI Spark, can do burst, HDR, shallow focus and even panoramas. I personally don't use any of these shots, so I don't really care, I just want to take standard photos. But you know what I care and many photographers care about? It's RAW photos. Shooting RAW gives you much more freedom afterwards in post-processing to play with the image without breaking it and get details from overexposed or underexposed areas. And one thing is certain, the Mavic Mini and the Spark don't shoot in RAW. Only the Mavic Air can shoot RAW and JPEG photos. So if you're a photographer and you're a professional who makes money from that, the Mavic Air is probably the better choice. What about flight modes and the app in general? You see, the Mavic Mini has a new app called Mavic Fly, which is basically a stripped-down version of the original DJI app. This is simpler to use for beginners in general. And it doesn't have as many features overall, but it does come with the main settings and options to fly the drone as we've been used to. But you know what? Probably the biggest downfall of the Mavic Mini so far is that it doesn't come with a follow me option. That may just be because DJI didn't want this drone to have that, as it is pretty much simply a matter of software. So we might get it with a future update, who knows. I imagine DJI wanted to do that because by not having any obstacle avoidance technology inside the Mavic Mini, it is pretty dangerous for beginners to have the drone follow them while maybe facing obstacles along the way and crashing it. Both the Spark and the Air are a bit better in this department, having a few more flight modes and quick shot modes compared to the Mavic Mini. The Mini does come with quick shots like Droney, Orbit, Helix and more. And these can actually use subject tracking, so tracking is available in the app. But you can only follow yourself or a certain subject while circling around it, for example. The DJI Mavic Air wins this one by having both bottom-facing sensors, front-facing and backward sensors. The DJI Spark has only bottom and forward-facing sensors, and the Mavic Mini only has bottom sensors. So the Mavic Mini, although it looks like the other Mavics, having those two cameras in front, it simply cannot use them because they're not there. However, if you want to fly it inside, it's absolutely the perfect drone. And that is because it flies really stable thanks to the cameras underneath, the optical flow, that actually takes photos of the ground and stabilizes the drone depending on the pattern underneath it. So it has to be a lighted area. And also because if you get the fly more combo with the Mavic Mini, you can get a 360 propeller protection cage which makes it absolutely safe to fly it indoors and even hit some walls if you please. This is probably the safest DJI drone that you can fly inside, or well, even safer than the Tello. Now, it seems that overall the DJI Mavic Air does have the technological advantage over the other two. The DJI Spark seems to be the last on this list, not having any advantage in almost any area. At this point, I would pretty much buy the DJI Spark only if you get like a really good deal, like $200 or something like that. But then again, now if you want to decide between the Mavic Air, which seems better, against the Mavic Mini, you should take the price into consideration. And here comes the surprise. The Mavic Air comes at a little bit over $900 in price, while the DJI Mavic Mini is under $400, which means that there's a $500 difference between them. And that's quite a lot. So you can basically buy more than two Mavic Minis in the price of the Mavic Air. The only reason I would buy the Mavic Air at this point is if I would be a photographer and really want that raw image photography a lot. The Mavic Mini is advertised as a beginner drone kind of, however, I would consider it almost professional level. One big drawback for professionals again is that you can't adjust things like ISO and shutter speed while you're shooting. I'm not sure if any I'm not sure if ND filters will come out for this drone soon, but they're probably gonna be quite useless because you can't adjust the shutter speed anyway. But what if you want to upgrade from the Spark for example? Is it worth it? In most cases yes it is, because by selling the Spark you already reduce a lot from the price of the DJI Mavic Mini, so you're getting it at quite a low price, and it's definitely a better drone. However, if you're a casual user and just like to have a solid drone, I think the Spark is more durable overall because it doesn't have the foldable arms. 
if you're not necessarily looking for a really high quality image and are happy with what the Spark has to offer, you should probably keep it. However, I know how exciting it is to upgrade a new technology and that's why I actually recommend getting the Mavic Mini. It's not an expensive buy like the Mavic 2 or something like that and it's definitely gonna be your best friend considering you don't even have to register it in most countries. The Mavic Mini is the perfect drone for vloggers and people who like to travel and take amazing videos and photos and pretty much for anybody, even casual users, beginners who have never before flown a drone. But now, what package do you buy? Is the 5 more combo worth it? In my Mavic Mini review on the website, that's quite complex I may say, but you can check in the description, I have underlined the differences between what you get in each package, in the standard Mavic Mini package and in the Mavic Mini Fly More combo. I definitely recommend to get at least one additional battery, even though the battery life is quite impressive. And the case is quite useful too. And, and basically only these two items get almost to $100 by themselves. So because the additional Fly More combo is by itself $100 more, it's definitely worth it, considering it comes with like three batteries, additional cables, propeller protectors so you can fly inside safely, the case and a few other spare stuff. Oh, and by the way, probably the most important accessory that comes in the Fly More combo is the multi-charger, which basically can charge three batteries at once and also hold them and show how much battery each one of them has. Because yes, although the battery of the Mavic Mini is a smart battery, so it discharges after some time, it doesn't have any LEDs on it, so you don't know how much battery you have left, unless you want to check it with this charger or the drone itself. There are links in the description to check the price of the Mavic on the official DJ website, which is the best place you can buy it right now. And there's also the links to my website comparison where you can find all this data carefully put into a table. The link to buy from DJI below does offer me a small commission to buy me a coffee. I would really appreciate clicking the link down below and then buying the drone if you so decide, because it gives me a small commission. But of course, you can search on Google for it or do whatever you want. You can even dislike this video if you so wish. But please leave a comment down below because I'm curious what drone from DJI you currently have and if you're gonna upgrade to the new Mavic Mini or if you want to buy it separately. If you're still undecided what to choose or have a specific budget, go on the link at the top or the one in the description to check my top drones in each price category, from under $50 up to $1000 and more. However, if you're really specific about the specs you want on your drone, go and check the drones for sale tool that you can find over here or again in the description. There you can filter the drones by price, battery life, range, camera, gimbal stabilization and even by weight to see if you have to register the drone in your country or not. Don't forget to check the next recommended video for you right here, check the drones for sale tool right here or if you want you can subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and see you later alligator.